sure in the last video I was talking about mounting the controller on the side wall at the front of the house. Now, the more I thought about that, that was actually a north facing wall and I didn't really like the idea of that controller being in the sun from sun up to sundown all day, every day. So what I've done is, as you would have just seen there now, I have actually decided to mount it on a south facing wall out the back. Now what that meant was I actually had to run irrigation controller cable through the roof space from the front. Now, that was just as much fun as, I don't know, but it wasn't very much fun. But anyway, it's done now. So what we're gonna do now is, we're gonna pair back this black here, expose the what they call the cores. In other words, there's a heap of little cables inside here. And each one of those are gonna marry up to one of these zones here. So this is, as I said before, this is one of these uh, Pro HC controllers by Hunter. Now, this is only one of the smaller ones. It comes in a six, a 12, and the one at home is a 24. So we've got our common, which I'll explain in a minute, MV, which is main valve, which is, I think you might remember, I've got six valves and one extra. So that's the main valve there. So that one will always turn on when a zone is on. So this could be zone one. So we might make the zoysia here, zone one, and these ones will wire up, which will be the front yard as we progress down there. Now, we'll also install the rain sensor. So it'll actually plug in up here. And I've got some conduit here, which I'm gonna run up behind the downpipe and attach to the gutter. So first things first, let's wire up our controller here and then we'll move around the front we'll wire up our valves and I'll show you how they get wired up. Hopefully by then, we won't be too far away to laying turf, which will be a separate video. So, so cables all paired back now. I've separated out all, them, all the different uh, pairs, if you will. Now, this actually technically isn't irrigation controller wire, but it does work perfectly fine. In fact, irrigation controller wire is normally gonna have different colors so you can line them up and match them up to your valves out the front. This stuff is just as good because it's actually numbered. So there's, a, there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, we only need one to six. We don't need to use both pairs. And then we need a common and a main valve. So some of these will be spares, uh, but all we do now is start lining them up. So it's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. That's our six zones lined up. Uh, and then we've got our main valve and a communication valve. So I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that are doing a neater job than me. Uh, wiring like this isn't my strong point, but I understand what has to happen and how it has to go. So uh, we've got our communication port done, which I'll explain when we get out the front. Our main valve, zone one, zone two, zone three, zone four, zone five, zone six. And we've got a couple of spare cables here or wires here uh, that technically we don't need, but down the track, if something happened or whatever, we've got a couple of backups should we need to swap anything over, which we can which we can do. So we'll move out the front now and we'll start wiring up these valves. I still haven't backfilled around this with sand just until everything was finalized and uh, functioning as intended. So what we need to do is, first things first, you'll notice all these, all these cables are all the same color. So they're all, in this case, they're all red. Now, it doesn't, I'll try and keep it simple. These controller valves are not polarity conscious. In other words, it doesn't matter which one of these cables you join up to the zone one, zone two, zone three, or zone four. Um, and the other one will be the common. So that was that first wire in the box that we talked about. So that's the common. So every single one of these, one of these will all join up together. So I'm just, for example, if we had three there, so one of the pair, one of the two cables coming at wires coming out of each valve will go to that one common, and this will go to the zone one on the controller, for example. This will go to zone two on the controller. This will go onto zone three, etc. So all of these, including this one here, so one of all of these valve wires all join up together, and they become the common. And the others become the zones included. So. That's as complicated as that part gets, but I'll just work through it with you slowly to give you a bit of an idea of exactly how that looks. Uh, 
because sometimes this is the bit that can confuse people. So you don't send both of these to number one or number two or number three, you send one of them to your, your allocated slot on your controller, be it zone one, and the other one is to your common. So all of these will need a common wire going back to that one port and all the others will go back to individual ports, one through to six. This one being our master valve or mainline valve, which has, again, its own slot, but it still has a common wire going back to the controller box. So we've got our cable here, which has come through the roof space down the wall behind me here. And we'll thread it now into here. We'll, we'll cut a bit of this off. We'll pair it all back. And I'll show you using now there's a lot of different ways to connect these. I'm going to use these scotch locks and they're a pretty um, okay sort of way of joining the cables together. Um, I'll go into more depth in a minute, but there's three, three spots here, which is handy when you're joining the common wires of one and the others will just be in and out. So let's join them up. I'm sure it'll make more sense as we go along. Okay, so from here on in, all we do now is we've located this is number one. I know for a fact that this one here is traveling out the back. So I'm gonna take this little, what they call scotch lock here. I'm gonna poke that in there like that. And that one in there like that. Push them through all the way to the end until they stop. Take our pliers. and we're done. You'll see these ones here have got some gel inside of them. That just keeps the moisture at bay. So there we go. So that is that is that one connected. As I said, we still have to do our common, but we'll do those all at the end. So I've got all of the uh, zones connected now. We just got to do our link of our common. So these all, as I mentioned earlier, these are all what they call daisy chain together. So we'll take those two there and we will take this wire here. So these little scotch locks have got three holes there. So we'll stick one in each of the holes like so. Hold them in nice and tight till they come through to the end. Again, same story. Squish them down, gel comes out. And that's that. So now we've got, what do we got? Make sure I get this right. So that's done. So from here on in, we now take the next one there and That one there, I'm just gonna trim these ends off because we... Don't need them like that. Uh, so now we'll cut a bit of this off here. And we'll go, make sure I've got this right. So one, a bit more of this cable again. I've just used this other bit of cable as it's just easier to work with the single core and we'll link it up to the uh, the black, this stuff here at the end.
moment of truth. Let's see if this works. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it is lit up, it's all touch screen. So you configure, okay. Make sure we've got the right uh, wireless. You can set this up with Wi-Fi or without Wi-Fi. Obviously we will use Wi-Fi that way I can connect it to my telephone and I can operate this system wherever it is I need to. So with our valves connected and wired up out the front, we've now configured the controller, which is actually really easy to do. It's literally just a matter of plugging it in, turning it on, it'll prompt you through here on this touch screen, select your Wi-Fi network if you wanna run it that way, then download the app to your phone, gives you access to your irrigation around the world. If you've got Wi-Fi and your Wi-Fi is connected to your computer here, your controller, you've got irrigation control no matter where you are. So as I said, we can control it here or we can control it on our phone. So what we'll do now, we'll just give it a quick test, make sure everything's functioning as it should because the turf is not too far away. So we'll quickly get that checked out. We'll mount our rain sensor and uh, that'll probably do us for today. And we'll move on to the next video, which will be turfing next time around. Okay, so all we need to do is open our HydroWise app here and we're gonna select, I've just put in Zoysia for this case here and we will just select for the sake of this we'll just go for one minute press start and with a bit of luck hallelujah everything is going as it should let's move on now to our rain sensor now basically this is a little little gadget here that when you get some rain you can set this here to actually disable any irrigation with a set amount of water. So for example, you've got a few different settings here. So let's just have a look. So we've got set at three mil, six mil, 13, I think that's 19 mil. So for me, in these parts, I'm probably gonna set that to six millimeters. So basically what that means is, if we get more than six millimeters, the irrigation system will disable for uh, I think it's 24 or 48 hours. You can change that if you want, but I think six is a reasonable amount here because if we get less than six, I still want to water. If we get more than six, uh, I can get by for the next cycle. So six is a sweet spot for me. You might choose to, to do something different, but that's what we're going to go with today. So this basically just mounts somewhere elevated. In our case, we've got the, the gutter mount. So we'll basically just attach this to the gutter run this cable down a conduit into the controller box, tell the controller that we've got a rain sensor installed and let it take care of the rest. Okay, so rain sensor is now mounted. We've got our conduit. I will just put a cable tie to tie it behind the, the uh, downpipe up above there. Comes down the conduit in the side here. I will actually, just for the sake of neatness, tuck it behind the back of those ones there. And then it actually mounts here to sensor one and communication port one. So basically we'll just strip this here with a black and a red wire, join them up, tell the controller, we'll turn it off first, tell the controller that it's now got a rain sensor on it and it will configure itself and make everything function as it should.
now our sensor is wired up. It's installed, it's above us there. Just shut him, close it all up. Now, all we'll do now is we can do it two ways. We can use the touch screen inside the, the controller there, or we can just open the app on our phone and we'll go HydraWise, which is the app. And we will bring up sensors and we'll add sensor to controller and we will call it rain sensor. Uh, there we go, rain sensor done. Add. There we go, so now it's already married it up. It says the sensor is not stopping any irrigation. And basically from here on in, if we get six millimeters or more of rain and there's a program due to, due, due to run, it won't actually run until the next uh, the next time it's due to run. So I think it's a 24 or 48 hour window where it won't enable the program. You can still manually override it if you need to, but uh, yeah, it is pretty well set and forget. Right, guys, well, look, we'll wrap this one up here. I am a little bit pushed for time. As I said, the turf's due any minute now and I need to do a bit of preparation as you can see here now. I need to do a bit of raking, fix up where Max has played zoomies on the, on the sand. Uh, so, Wrap it up here. Hope you've enjoyed this episode and we'll catch you next time on the Aussie Lawn.